Um, Jay Wilkinson is our last um, speaker of the evening, and the highlight of his year, he said, was taking his two teenage daughters for travel, and they hit 10 countries in nine days. So teenage daughters, he said, um, probably not a good idea to take a 13-year-old to 10 countries in nine days. A little bit of an overload. Uh, Jay is a self-admitted geek with social skills, and he's excited to come to us tonight and tell us the story of how silicon implants made Bill Gates and Steve Jobs billionaires. Welcome, Jay. Thank you very much. You know, the only bad thing about going last is I started drinking at 4.30. So, Chief Cassidy, I have a driver. Don't worry about that. Thank you. Um, tonight, I'm going to tell the story about how silicon implants made Bill Gates and Steve Jobs billionaires. And this story starts with a question. The question is, what is the greatest invention of all time? You know, I've heard people say it's fire. Well, fire is not an invention, it's a discovery, right? Inventions are things like Gutenberg's printing press, electricity, so many great inventions in the history of time. In my opinion, the greatest invention of all time has to be the microchip, if you think about what it's done. The microchip was invented in 1958 at Texas Instruments by a guy named Jack Kilby, and six months later, Robert Noyce in a different laboratory, a different state, figured out how to replace the germanium that Kilby used with silicon and created the world's first silicon implanted microchip. Note that I did not say silicone implanted microchip because there is a difference between silicon and silicone. Silicon is a natural element that naturally conducts electricity while silicone is a derivative of silicon that we use for all kinds of man-made things, right? So the, the, the microchip had a profound impact on history. In fact, it was the first time in human history that we took something that, that decreased the cost of electrical functions from a million to one in one fell swoop. It was a fantastic invention. In fact, a guy came out, Gordon Moore, with Moore's Law. Anybody here have a law named after them? That's pretty cool. Maybe the, the Cassidy Belt, do you have a law named after you? Um, in, in, in 1965, Gordon Moore invented the microchip and, and, and came along for the ride and said that in the next 18 months, we'll see the, the capacity of semiconductors completely double in size and scope. But what's fascinating to me, if you take into account the history of evolution, of everything that's ever been invented in the history of time, from the beginning of time to today, and you compare that to the next 18 months in history, we will see that all innovation, all things, will double in scope and capacity. It's amazing the times that we live in, exponential growth, everything is happening at alarming rates. The evolution of the computer age came about pretty quickly. Steve Jobs and Bill Gates have become wealthy and just crazy rich because of computers, right? Well, it's not just about computers because they were really ready to take off because of this invention called the internet. Al and his buddies at ARPANET figured out how to connect computers at universities and military installations all across the world and create a network of computers that allowed information to flow freely everywhere. And Gates and Jobs were flying high. You know, Gates was about ready to uh, launch Windows 3.0 and Jobs was launching the, the Quadra computer line. Remember the Quadras? And these guys were just doing great. And not to mention, they started to become pretty popular with the ladies about this time. <laughs> They were really, really grooving, and they made geek chic for the first time. But they didn't even realize what was about to happen, because at that point in history, the next thing blew up everything. A guy named Tim Berners-Lee at the Bern Laboratories in Switzerland invented this little thing called the World Wide Web. Anybody heard of it? The World Wide Web. He took what, what, what uh, Apple computers put together with hypercard stacks, and combined that with Al's internet and connected the world with information and things started going across the world at lightning speed. All of a sudden, everything we had could be connected and information was flowing. You know, we have these information devices in our pockets that connect us with the world now. I know that there are five people currently uh, logged into Foursquare right now, for example, here at the Bourbon. And internet access everywhere. So what did we do with all of this internet access and the connectivity? Well, at first, unfortunately, we filled it up with porn. That was the worst part. But, you know, I think if you go around the room and you talk to experts in the, in the industry, they'll say that if it weren't for porn, we wouldn't have a lot of the things on the internet we have today, or at least it would be 10 years behind the times. So in many ways, silicone did have an impact, right? It was kind of the, 
the silicone and the silicon working together to form the backbone of the internet that allowed Jobs and Gates to make these filthy riches that they created. And they have made a lot of money on the backbones of this technology. So when you think all those years ago, back to 1958, when Kilby was sitting in his lab trying to figure out how to invent the microchip, what inspired him? What could possibly have been that inspired him to create the internet and all the things that fell behind it? Well, whatever it was, we do know that two things. First of all, the silicone implant certainly had some impact on it, as we've talked about, but the silicon chip itself certainly had the greatest impact of all things in history in terms of getting us to the point where people like this could make so much money. <laughs> so I would just like to finish by saying thank you on behalf of Bill and Steve for helping support their dream and have a fantastic evening. Thank you.